Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer from uh, the parish of St. Margaret of Scotland uh, in Barrie. And uh, I do hope that you've had uh, a wonderful um, Easter weekend, um, a time of, of renewal and refreshing. And uh, if you were like me, you caught up with family online, um, well, by whatever means uh, you could have. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. And come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around me. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Fire goes before him, and he consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightning lights up the world, and earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of the judgments of God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth, you are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and the joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first, re first uh, reading is taken from the book of Micah, a reading from chapter 7. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemies. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I must bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him until he takes my side and executes judgment for me. Until he takes, he will bring me out, of, out to the light, and I shall see his vindication. Then my enemy will see, and shame will cover her, who said to me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Now she will be trodden down like the mire of the streets. A day for the building of walls. In that day the boundaries shall be extended. In that day they will, they will come to you from Assyria to Egypt, and from Egypt to the river, from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. But the earth will be desolate because of its inhabitants, for the fruit of their doings. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, which lives alone in a forest in the midst of a garden land. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt, Show us marvelous things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the book of Acts and reading from chapter 3. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him, da him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. 
Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I, I, I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Reading from chapter 16 of John's Gospel. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will, th will think that, they are, that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you so that when you, that hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to see, I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are, are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So what happens when we come to the end of ourselves and there's nothing more to give? What happens when life has sucked everything from us and we have nothing left to sustain us or to give to others? This morning we have a rather obscure reading from the minor prophet called Micah. He is a key character who prophesies the fall of Samaria in a period of movement of rural people to Jerusalem and the international situation made unstable by the rise of Assyria. His role was to make theological sense of this time of great social upheaval and chaos. The first three chapters of the book speak of judgment. The middle two chapters speak of hope. And the final two chapters, which we have, been, have, seen, have been added after the people returned from exile in Babylon in the 6th century, use that basic pattern. It starts with judgment, and moves to hope. We have read from the final chapter here that shifts from judgment to hope. Just prior to this, Micah describes the people who are out to make it for themselves, and he writes it as a lament, a sorrowful reflection on the condition of humanity. We pick up that reading from verse 7 of that final chapter, where he creates this contrast between himself and those whom he mourns with a but. He writes, but as for me. Micah then describes himself in a relationship of dependency on God. I will look to the Lord. My God will hear me. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. In other words, even in the midst of the most appalling of circumstances, when I look for God, then I will be heard. When I am brought down, then God will lift me up. When I am lost in the fog of life, then God 
will illuminate my life. In a sense, the writer Micah recognizes that when he has come to the end of himself, then it, God, it is God who shows up and listens, acts and illuminates. We've just had the day of Pentecost in the reading from the book of Acts that we've just read. And Peter has preached his first public sermon in Jerusalem and explained the significance of this event in the light of the work and ministry of Jesus. The writer of Acts, who we could assume is Luke, has just described this amazing community of folk called the church, who have come to share all things in common. But it's clear that the early church retained the worshipping life around the temple that Jesus, their teacher, had participated in. And Peter and John are heading into the temple at three o'clock in the afternoon. Why? To participate in the daily service of inter intercession with all the people. On their way into the temple, they are summoned by this man who is brought to the temple each day to beg for alms. And he's been, he's been lame since birth. Now we need to remind ourselves that there was no social net for the poor and those with health issues who were profoundly vulnerable. His encounter with Peter and John was to be like any other, a simple asking for alms from some anonymous bypasser entering the temple. Nothing more complicated than that, I'm sure. And while it is an hour of prayer and intercession, he seems to expect nothing more from folk than their financial support. But things are not as simple as that. We know that the community of followers of Jesus was financially incredibly insecure. As we discover later on in the books of Acts, they had to set up their own welfare system for widows and orphans. And then when this global famine emerges, Paul had to appeal to Christians in the rest of the Roman Empire for financial assistance for those in the church in Jerusalem. Hence, Peter and John's announcement that they were penniless makes perfect sense. They really were the wrong folk for him to ask. But Peter, possibly emboldened by Pentecost, says to the man, What I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, or Jesus Christ in the Nazarene, stand up and walk. Then Peter grabs the man by his hand and lifts him up, and immediately his feet and ankles are made strong. In fact, they are made so strong that Luke uses words like jump, stand, walk, and leap to describe the man's actions. And as is appropriate, he gives praise to God, and the crowd who recognize him are simply bowled over. Each of these narratives talks about human incapacity. Micah in the midst of the fall of Samaria and the assault of the Assyrians, a man at the temple gate expecting nothing more than regular arms he asks, and Peter and John without the financial resources to help him. Yet each of them talks about God's intervention, listening, lifting up, and illuminating Micah's life giving a man dependent upon arms the capacity to support himself and helping two destitute followers give capacity through what is not theirs. Often we are reminded to be stewards of what God has given us and to give to others and to use what we have for the work of God in the lives of others. And that is still profoundly true. But there are times in life when we no longer have the capacity to go on, to see a different future, or to offer anything of substance from ourselves. There are times, though, that we need to simply be reminded that when we've reached the end of ourselves, that we may have reached the beginning of God. When we can no longer listen to another, then God hears. When we can no longer raise up another, then God will lift them up. When we can no longer offer clarity, then it's God who illuminates their lives. When we can no longer offer alternatives, then God will open up possibilities. And when we can no longer offer practical help, even in the smallest way, then God is there to transform a life. Sometimes we need to learn, when we've reached our end, God is just beginning. Amen. We say, Hear, O Israel, together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This morning I'm using uh, intercessions for the Christian people as a resource uh, for our intercessions today. In the power of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the whole bright earth, so lovingly created, yet so compassionately redeemed, that it may speak again of the glory and majesty of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all nations and peoples of the earth, to whom God shows no partiality, that all may be transformed by mercy to live together in hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church, whose life is led with Christ in God, that in all its diverse, diversity witness may be made to one Lord, one faith, one da baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in high places of authority, for whom Christ has put to death and was raised, that they may be led to govern with equity and justice, bringing life to those in the shadows of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have been baptized and given the garments of light, that they, with the whole church, may be witnesses to the gospel in daily life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all captives, prisoners, and those condemned to die, with whom the Holy One shares suffering and abandonment, that they may find strength, freedom, and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer in mind, body, or soul, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, that they may be comforted, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And today we pray for those who are near and dear to us. Those who are on our hearts and minds. Those for whom we share a concern. That they may know God's presence in this day. We pray for all who have died and all who grieve that in Christ, who triumphs over death, they may find light perpetual and blessed assurance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all gathered in this virtual assembly, that we, like Mary and Peter and John, may see the tomb empty, and joyfully believing, walk in newness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray the collect for Easter 1. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with you in glory, who with you in the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily, day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the interesting side effects of uh, the global pandemic that we're facing is uh, we've begun to communicate around the world. Um, I understand there are people um, in the US, uh, here in Canada, uh, South Africa, and even India who uh, are watching these on a regular basis. And uh, we appreciate you joining us as a virtual part of our community um, in this time. And we pray for God's richest blessing upon you, uh, wherever you may be. 
Uh, Norm Seville, uh, who's uh, one of our lay assistants here, um, is doing daily devotions um, for Mondays, Tuesdays, um, Thursday and Friday. And uh, if you wish to be part of those, they get sent out um, each day by Norm, by email. Um, and do um, email our main office and uh, we'll pass on your contact information to Norm. Or if you have Norm's email address, uh, do contact him uh, directly as well. My understanding is that the group has grown quite substantially um, over the last uh, few weeks. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of his Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.